Sid joins us in the studio. It's a rarity because he's always traveling all over the world. Sid, uh, the Mahindra and Mahindra, and as I just learned from Anand Mahindra, it's called the TUV 300. Otherwise, I would have said TUV 300. You know, is the price point interesting? What's the big upshot of this launch? It's a make or break vehicle in many ways for Mahindra Manvi and uh, good to be back in here by the way. Uh, I have to say that uh, when it comes to Mahindra's strategy, this one becomes crucial because you know Mahindra was sort of sitting pretty while the rest of the market deteriorated and every other player was under pressure because utility vehicles, SUVs in particular, were always in demand. Uh, that's pretty much its home turf and that's where all the other players started to really hit Mahindra over the last few quarters. We've seen a decline in market share from Mahindra and which is why now uh, the new range of vehicles that's starting to come on stream starting with the TUV 300 is what's going to make the difference. So if this vehicle is accepted by the market, Mahindra hopes to sell about 5,000 units e even per month. And uh, it is the Bolero replacement, which has traditionally been its best-selling car anyway in its portfolio. And so it, it's crucial to get it right in that sense, And uh, which is why it's perhaps not surprising that Anand Mahindra got a little bit of emotional at uh, the launch of this vehicle, and which is why he was also at that launch, I have to say, because uh, this one is a little bit special. Let's listen to what he had to say. Will the TUV 300 make you love it? I know it will. Because the TUV is authentic. Its styling is authentic. It comes out of legacy. It comes out of heritage. But it also comes out of modern styling cues. It comes out of aspiration. And it comes out of personality and character. It is stylish without shouting. Very clean lines, very elegant silhouette. But once again, it's not saying, here, look at me, here, look at me. You look at it without it shouting. It's beautiful, and it doesn't boast about it. And as Vivek told you, it cares for you. It keeps you safe. This vehicle will keep you safe. We have taken care to see that we meet Indian safety regulations four years before it is required. So am I in love? I drove this vehicle yesterday. And I'm so glad my wife is not here because I can say in front of all of you, yes, I've fallen in love with something else apart from my wife. Anand Mahindra, clearly in an emotional uh, frame of mind when he's describing the TUV 300, and as Sid said, this is a make or break vehicle uh, for Mahindra and Mahindra. The stock, by the way, is down one and third of a percent right now. So 15 rupees off on the Mahindra stock, 1,154. Shifting gears, literally and figuratively, to Hero Motor Corp and a plant in Colombia. I mean, it seems like if the domestic market is faltering, don't worry, the rest of the globe awaits. Uh, Latin America has also faltered of late, of course, but having said that, it's where the big opportunity lies. Uh, when you look at the hotspots for two-wheelers in terms of volume, really, you know, just those mass motorcycles which sell thousands every month, it is uh, Indonesia and then, of course, the bigger chunk of it comes from Latin America. Uh, a lot of Indian players have tried to break into Latin America in the past. Bajaj sells bikes there. TVS was the first one there with an assembly plant. But this is the first time we're seeing full-scale manufacturing. It's part of uh, Hero's strategy, if you will, uh, when it broke away from Honda, to say that not only will it be self-reliant in terms of technology, but also also make sure that it hedges its bets by uh, making sure that the loss in market share which is bound to happen at some point in India uh, is compensated by business outside of India. Latin America is uh, perhaps smart in the sense that uh, I remember last year when we were in Brazil with Pavan Munjal he had shared this point about why Colombia and not Brazil itself which is the bigger market in terms of volume. Uh, obviously, better incentives in Colombia in uh, the uh, particular region where they've got uh, the plant going. It's also been a quicker time to completion. I think that's been a very crucial part of why they went to Colombia and uh, they've managed to get that plant up in just about a year's time, which is pretty quick. Uh, it's going to make 80,000 bikes to start with Manvi and uh, that will scale up to 1,50,000 bikes uh, in about a year and a half from now. Uh, that, of course, will be a function of market demand as well, how quickly that ramp up happens. Uh, Brazil, Colombia and, uh, of course, um, uh, Venezuela and Argentina will be the key markets, though 
Hero is very keen to also look at uh, you know the, the Central American region as well, and this plant uh, initially will probably cater to that. Uh, the interesting thing about that strategy, Manvi, is that uh, Pavan Munjal doesn't rule out a second plant, perhaps an assembling plant, not a full manufacturing plant, but a second one somewhere either in Nicaragua or Costa Rica, because uh, that's the kind of potential Hero sees in that market. Uh, the brand uh, doesn't have a very typical Indian name, and I think that's again something else that might go in its favor, unlike Bajaj or uh, what, what TVS has faced. But the good news for Hero is that both Bajaj and TBS have sort of opened the doors. Quality-wise, products coming out of India are now perceived uh, understood as… Understood and accepted. Yeah, they're, they're good products and so uh, that makes things a little bit easier. Uh, the marketing of, of these bikes, of course, started earlier with imports into Brazil and Colombia. So, uh, the market already knows the brand too. So, the first Indian company to set up a manufacturing plant in Latin America, that is Hero Motor Corp. The stock is flat right now. Well, it's up actually, picked up a bit while Siddharth was talking. It's up a quarter percent, 23.50 on Hero Motor Corp. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think uh, let's look at how Maruti is doing because the stock is down about half a percent. And the reason why I'm um, you know, putting the spotlight on Maruti now is because we're taking full advantage of Sid's presence and we're going to talk about the impending launch from Renault, which is the Quid. And the Quid is sort of serious competition for Maruti. It's that big citadel nobody's been able to breach. Uh, Manvi, others have tried. Uh, Datsun was one brand that tried. And of course, uh, Hyundai has had some success with the Eon. But really, when you look at the way the Indian car market uh, sits today, uh, a quarter of it comes from entry-level hatchback cars. And Maruti pretty much owns that entire space. Huge volumes every month. When you talk about Maruti's volumes month on month, a large chunk of that comes from, of course, the Alto 800, the Alto K10, the Wagonar, and uh, the Celerio with its base versions. All of those cars, um, you know, they're all from one stable and that's where I think uh, Renault is now trying to make uh, a little bit of uh, an impact. Uh, before I talk about the car and um, also, you know, just the kind of strategy that Renault is employing, uh, Carlos Ghosn was of course in India to unveil the car a few uh, months ago. Here's what he shared with us in May. It's a completely new platform. It's a platform and this platform is geared toward global markets. Now, this is the first car coming out of a new platform, and this is a car for the Indian market, uh, but with ambitions for other markets also. I think we, this is a proving ground in a, in a certain way. Um, this is a huge segment of the Indian market. 25% of the Indian uh, market is made by products like the one that Quid is going to be challenging. Um, and for the moment, we have absolutely no offer. Uh, so this is the first offer we have on this, uh, on this market. We have two main competitors. You mentioned one of them. Um, obviously, the task is to come better than these competitors on everything which matters for the consumer. And that's going to be the clincher, really. It's about the product at the end of the day. And uh, Renault has tried to up its game when it comes to network and marketing as well. The duster has been a big hit, and which is why if you look at that car, the Quid, it has sort of design cues which come off the duster. It looks like a baby duster, a baby SUV. Again, going back to that whole point about how everybody seems to want to buy an SUV these days. And that's pretty much the kind of play from uh, Renault. The car has 98% local content. It will be exported as well. And that CMFA platform that Gon refers to uh, is very crucial for its strategy. In fact, Renault, Nissan, the alliance strategy going forward. A number of new vehicles will come off of this new platform, not just in India, but in other developing markets and also in Western Europe. Exports from India will account for uh, the startup on that uh, strategy globally, and uh, which is why, again, the quid becomes really, really important. And uh, Renault, of course, will try and maximize the kind of uh, volume play it's going to look at, Manvi. But let's, let's understand one thing, that every time you want to deem something a success uh, or a battle against Maruti 1, uh, it's difficult to quantify that because the Maruti scale is just so much larger. So even if you do 5,000 or 6,000 or 8,000 units a month with a particular car, which is fantastic, you know, Maruti is doing like 20,000. Um, but having said that, any kind of a dent at this point, uh, any uh, chink in Maruti's armor will be a battle one. Well, we see how that plays out. Sid, great to have you in the studio here on Power Lunch to literally cover all of that ground with all of the developments in the auto space. Thanks very Thanks. much, Sid.